This video will show you how to be a champion of safety and use the Site Planning Safety Checklist to inspect swing and slide gate installations. This video is intended for demonstration purposes only. Gate safety is not only important for property owners and visitors, but also for the installer and anyone servicing the gate and operator. LiftMaster is committed to safety. That's why we have invested in the national Don't Chance It, Check It gate safety program to help keep customers, installers, and the public safe and informed. Using the site planning safety checklist for every installation helps ensure safe gate access systems are designed, installed, and maintained in accordance with both UL325 and ASTM F2200. The International Building Code, IBC, International Residential Code, IRC, and International Fire Code, IFC, also require gate installations to comply with UL325 and ASTM standards. The gates depicted in this video are intended to represent common slide and swing gate applications and do not represent all gates and gate types. The checklist has two sections. The first part is to see if the installation complies with UL325 guidelines. The second part checks for compliance to ASTM guidelines. Begin by checking that the installed gate operator is approved to current UL325 standards. LiftMaster operators meet UL325 and bear the UL listing mark. Next, let's look for the proper gate warning signs. Warning signs must be securely mounted in the near vicinity of each side of the moving gate in a place where they can be easily seen. Faded signs should be replaced. Now, check the entrapment zones. An entrapment zone is defined as a location where a person can be caught or held in a position that increases the risk of injury. To be UL325 compliant, two monitored safety entrapment protection devices must be installed at all entrapment zones. LiftMaster gate operators have a built-in inherent reversing system that counts as one monitored entrapment device. Acceptable safety devices include inherent obstruction sensing, monitored photoelectric sensors, and monitored edge reversing sensors. LiftMaster monitored external entrapment protection devices must be used. Refer to the manual for a list of entrapment protection accessories. For a swing gate operator to function, the operator requires a minimum of one external monitored entrapment protection device to be installed in either direction where an entrapment zone exists. The new UL guidelines became effective on August 1, 2018. For a slide gate operator to function, the operator requires a minimum of two external monitored entrapment protection devices, one in the open direction and one in the closed direction. Check for a minimum of one external monitored entrapment protection device to be installed in either direction where an entrapment zone exists. LiftMaster slide gate operators ship with one safety edge and one set of photo eyes to help you get started ensuring compliance with UL325 guidelines. Every gate installation is unique. It is the responsibility of the installer to ensure all entrapment zones are protected with two independent entrapment protection devices. Inform the property owners or managers of how updates to safety standards can reduce possible accidents. Make note of the installed safety devices for each of the entrapment zones. Monitored LiftMaster external entrapment protection devices must be used with LiftMaster operators to meet UL325. Do not repair a gate operator manufactured prior to the year 2000, as they may not have inherent and external entrapment protection systems. Operators manufactured between the years 2000 and present may be serviced if monitored external entrapment protection devices protecting all entrapment zones are properly installed. The checklist will ask you to identify the facility type as classified under UL325. A single-family home or residential application would be considered Class 1 facility. An apartment, condo, or gated facility would be considered a Class 2 facility. An industrial application would be considered a Class 3. Class 4 facilities are usually considered maximum security applications. Check the label on the operator to see which class the product is suitable for.
Now let's check for compliance with ASTM F2200 standards. Adhering to the standard helps eliminate potential entrapment hazards. The following checks apply to both swing and slide gate installations. Check for smooth bottom edges on the gate. It is common to find pickets extending down past the bottom bar of the gate. Extending pickets must be removed or a new bottom bar must be added to prevent objects from getting caught under the gate. Check the locations of any access controls. Access controls, such as three button stations or telephone entry systems, must be mounted at least six feet from the gate. Barbed wire must be mounted at least six feet above grade. Barbed tape or razor wire, while similar, must be mounted at least eight feet above grade. A separate pedestrian entrance that is out of reach of the moving gate must be available. Vehicular gates must only be used for automotive traffic. A gate that is disconnected from the operator shall not move. The gate must also be prevented from falling over if it becomes disconnected from its supporting hardware. Sliding gates should have a catch post or bracket. In some cases, guide rollers are used for this purpose as well. Swing gates should have chains installed for this purpose. Let's look at the requirements that are specifically for swing gates. Check that the distance from the pivot point to the column edge is less than 4 inches. Now, open the gate and measure the distance from the open gate to the wall or the nearest stationary object. There must be a space greater than 16 inches or a monitored entrapment protection device must be installed. For slide gate installations, perform the following checks. Check that all gate rollers are covered. This includes V-Track and cantilever rollers. Spaces between gate pickets should be no wider than 2 and a quarter inches. If spaces are wider than 2 and a quarter inches, meshing must be added from the bottom of the gate up to at least 6 feet above grade. Sliding gates should never have a gap exceeding 2 and a quarter inches from fence or gate support post. If a gap exceeding two and a quarter inches exists, a panel must be added to reduce the gap. In addition, entrapment protection is required to protect any gap in this draw-in area. Any stationary objects that are more than 16 inches away from the gate frame do not require any corrective action. Check for positive stops, which prevent a sliding gate from rolling past its intended open and close positions. Check for two external safety entrapment protection devices. There must be a minimum of one external monitored entrapment protection device in the open direction and a minimum of one external monitored entrapment protection device in the closed direction. It's common to find receiver guides mounted on the front side of a receiver post. To be ASTM compliant, any receiver guide mounted lower than 8 feet above grade must be mounted behind or to the side of the receiver post. Once the gate safety check is complete, the installer or service person should review the results with the property owners and provide a copy of the completed safety check to the homeowner or property manager. A copy should also be stored with any other documentation relating to this site. Keeping this kind of record not only allows you to show proof of inspection, but opens up future service opportunities. You've just learned how to design, build, and maintain safe gate installations. Be a champion of safety and make Don't Chance It, Check It a habit every time you visit a site to ensure it meets the new UL325 and ASTM F2200 standards. You are not only protecting your customers, you are also protecting your business.